<sighs> I feel like I can taste all the gas in my face. I can taste it, that's gross. Welcome to another long-term update. Today, we're gonna to take a look at my Maxim Defense PDX in 762 by 39. I originally reviewed this gun a year ago. I'll put the, uh, the button up here down in the comments somewhere. So you can go to see that to get all the details that I thought back then. Um, if not, I'm gonna to try to give you the Cliff Notes version right now. Why do I do long-term updates? Um, I think it's important to, to talk about a gun, not just after a round count, but after um, you know, having a gun for a while, living with it, actually, you know, seeing the situations that you use it in. And I think it takes more than, you know, maybe a thousand rounds over a week is going to be good. Um, but I think it takes more than that. It takes a few months of using a gun to really understand what its use is and uh, maybe finding its shortcomings. So if I think a gun after a year deserves uh, an update with some more information, that's what I'll do. So Cliff Notes version of the gun. This is the Maxim Defense PDX in 762. They also offered in 5, uh, 556 and 300 blackout. I chose 762 a year ago because of ammo costs. Um, also, it's a five and a half inch barrel, so I wasn't really concerned about accuracy. And I know, I know, 762 can be plenty accurate. You can get two ammo away at a, you know, out of a, a really well built AK. I understand that, but I wasn't concerned about accuracy and I wasn't concerned about suppression at the time. So 300 blackout was out. Um, because if you suppress the gun, you void the warranty. Well, you can see right here, void, warranty is voided. So we're gonna talk about this in a second, but first off, um, just details on it. It has this amazing collapsible stock for position. Um, this is an SBR. I would recommend getting the pistol uh, because the pistol brace is more comfortable and gives you a better place to rest your, your chin on because there's really no way to get a good cheek weld on this gun. Um, but it's an, this one's an SBR because the SBR is a little more compact for fitting into backpacks. Um, it has a QD slot under here. I have a Sly Tactical Sling rigged up to this gun, which I absolutely love. Radian Raptor uh, LT Ambi charging handle. Radian 4590 uh, thumb safety. I've since switched from 90 to 45 degrees in all my thumb safeties. It works much better for me. Reptilia Corp um, kind of chopped CQB style grip which is nice the trigger is alg defense it is heavy um, but heavier i'd say is better than getting like light primer strikes but over time i've gotten used to it it's not like so unbelievably heavy uh, that it's it's obnoxious very big clunk there um, you know i think we've just gotten soft and i'm definitely one of those people that's gotten soft when it comes to having nice triggers with uh, light trigger pulls it has an ambi mag catch, so you can drop the mag on this side or this side. Um, other things, the top rail does have an integrated notch to keep the front rail from rotating. Uh, up front here, they have QD slot, seven-sided M-lock. Um, the QD slots, I talked about this before, and I still wish that they put the QD either further back here, which they probably would have issues with the barrel nut. Um, where it is, it just kind of gets in the way of my hand. Um, but once again, it's a short, package so you are going to lose things you're going to have trade-offs um, that definitely present themselves so since then i have changed my red dot to a hollow sun actually i had a hollow sun on it before but this is a different hollow sun the one i had had the acss reticle with bdc built in which made no difference for this gun because i'm not shooting it out past 50 yards and i'll talk about why in just a second but um, red dot on here i put the unity tactical mount because it is not just for the, the, the height, like on this gun, I'm not really going to cheek weld it too much. I'm always going to have a chin weld just because of the way this uh, stock or brace is. So having the extra height was nice. Also, it has an integrated um, backup iron sights, which is uh, a plus for me because the, the real estate up front is really, really narrow on getting a weapon mounted light. So I went with the Enforce uh, WML X2, so the two battery 800 lumen. It's bright enough, you know, to ward people off. It's not gonna be winning any uh, long distance battles because I think the Candela is, is pretty bad, but it, it does the trick and it keeps the profile slim and the gun uh, slim overall. Hand stop up here is very, very useful. Um, sometimes when I'm doing mag changes, you'll see in video, like I kind of come forward of it and I have to remember uh, to put my hand there. So overall, great gun. Um, my warranty is voided because I added a, uh, a, 
a Nomad 30 to this gun. And I did um, do, I double voided warranties, okay? So I've added the Nomad 30 to this gun and I have the chemo adapter for the Nomad 30 uh, with a muzzle brake underneath there. Now I know I'm not supposed to use the chemo adapter with the Nomad 30 um, on 7.62. I know it's supposed to be direct thread. I share this can with a few other guns. Um, and so I'm just kind of accepting that something may go wrong with it. Uh, and that's just the case. So sorry, Mike Pappas, that's what I'm doing, but I have mounted it on here. Uh, chemo with a um, muzzle brake under there. I'll never shoot it without that. And I'll tell you right now, that hate brake that comes on here, I know it's supposed to limit um, sound, concussion, and gas coming back in your face uh, as a shooter, but it's putting a giant fireball down range. So I just knew that I wouldn't want to carry it in a backpack and actually have to use it when I didn't have ears on because my ears would be ringing. This thing is loud, okay? It's a five and a half inch barrel. I don't know if I said that already. Five and a half inch barrel, 7.62, giant fireball, big concussion, um, and very, very loud. So I have to have it suppressed if I'm going to really consider using it indoors. Um, it would just be unbelievably deafening. So um, added that on there. Is it hearing safe with supersonic ammo? No. Um, could it be with subs? Maybe. I haven't tried it with subsonic 7.62. Um, there's already enough issues with accuracy on this gun as it is, so I really don't care. So let's talk about accuracy. Uh, when I first got the gun, all I had was Golden Tiger and uh, Tula, I think. And so when I was zeroing it, I was noticing that my pattern was erratic. It was all over the place. And I just said, you know what? It's Golden Tiger. You know, the, these ammos are meant for longer barrels, obviously. Um, and so I chalked it up to the ammunition because the patterns weren't great. So I initially had some trouble zeroing the gun but I have since gotten some of the 762 by 39 ammo from Maxim Defense. It's 117 grain, tumble upon impact, and they said this will improve the accuracy. Well, here's how that worked out. So one of the things that I've noticed with uh, the PDX and 762, even before I suppressed it, was the accuracy didn't seem to be very good. So we're only here at 20 yards. We can't really blame it on me. I mean, we, maybe we can. Uh, I'm gonna shoot it with uh, some Golden Tiger Russian ammo. And then I've also, I talked to Maxim and they sent me their ammo and they said their ammo is more accurate in their gun. So we're gonna test it side by side. Three shots at 20 yards. Um, we'll see if it has any difference, any noticeable difference at all. But. All right, so my hold, I just held right on center on the target. I didn't do my proper hold with this tall uh, mount. So we'll see where they ended up. And I was pretty, pretty on it. All right, so here we are. I was right on here, so. I don't know if my zero's off, but we've got these three shots. So it was a three shot group at 20 yards. Um, not spectacular. Let's try with the other ammo. So this is Maxim's ammo. They say it's more accurate. So I'm gonna go for the top left bullseye. Already starting to get a mirage off the can. I decided to do five because the first three on the other ammo, a lot of it could have been me. Huh. Interesting. So, I was holding here and it looks like they're all off to the left. That's weird. I don't 
we have to do this again. Let's try again. So we got these three here. I'm gonna go straight down the center with the Maxim ammo. Try again. This is only 20 yards. Yeah, that's weird. So these were the original three. And I've got one, two, three, four. That's a double. No, that's a double right there. So most of them were to the left with the Maxim ammo. So we had one drop down to the right. To see if it's me, maybe I'm just a shitty shot, I'm um, gonna try the Zero Delta at the same distance, 20 yards, and confirm. That's three, and I didn't do any holdover. I just held on the dot, so let's see. All right, so there's my three from the 556 ZRO. So I was holding here. I, don't, I haven't zeroed the gun, so that's where I'm at. So it's not me. Now I know after watching those results, there's a lot of you know variables introduced. First off, I was shooting it with a suppressor. Do I think that at 20 yards, I should see that much of a shift with a suppressor? And I checked, there's no baffle strikes, the bullets weren't tumbling or anything. Um, no, I think I don't really blame it on the can to be you know having issues there with accuracy at only 20 slash 25 yards. Um, it is acceptable for me to understand that that's the accuracy I'm going to get out of this gun and understanding that the ammo does make a difference. My impact shifted way left with this ammo versus Golden Tiger. So understanding that and knowing that this is very ammunition specific and having a proper zero for that is going to be key. And I know you you might be saying, oh my God, you got this giant, you know, riser on here and, you know, might as well put a carry handle on it. I get it. Um, but if I'm zeroing at 50, anything out to 50, you know, I do have a high mechanical offset, but it's something that I can compensate for. So, you know, the accuracy isn't spectacular, but once again, this is a PDW, a, a personal defense weapon meant for close quarters combat, and uh, it doesn't really have to be that accurate. So what is this good for? Is this your first gun purchase? No. Is this your second gun purchase? No. Is this your 10th gun purchase? Maybe. And maybe because as you're getting into things and you're, you know, like golf, okay, you have specific clubs for specific purposes. This is very, very specific for being a backpack blaster. This is what I have in my backpack when I'm at church because you never know what happens in there when you're praising Jesus. Bad guys come in uh, to churches all the time. This sometimes rests next to my bed. I've got other guns that I cycle through. Um, and it's a good, uh, you know, truck gun, something compact. So when you're looking for something that is compact and that you're probably going to use, not in wide open spaces, so maybe not a truck gun, but the other two situations for sure, um, this is gonna be a good option because inside of 50 yards, accuracy is, is doable and you're gonna have more power you know, why would you get this? You know, you might ask, why would you get this over like a PCC 9 millimeter, 10 millimeter, you know, 45? Well, because more and more, you know, people are realizing that sometimes bad guys have body armor, very rare, but most of the time they're gonna have pistol rated body armor if they have any on. Um, but also, you know, rounds need to really have more takedown power and the 7.62 is gonna have more takedown power uh, than, you know, other pistol rounds. So. 
it could be the 10th gun you buy, but it is a very specific purchase. Know that going in and you will not be disappointed. Now, I haven't talked about price. Um, the retail price is 2,300 bucks. Street prices, I don't know, go look it up on Gun Broker, but it's probably in the neighborhood of two grand, um, which is expensive. But once you start getting into those specific golf clubs, okay, those specific guns for specific purposes, it could definitely be uh, worth it for you. But just so you know, it's not a gun that you're gonna be doing a lot of training with. Oh yeah, and I don't know if I talked about this, but it's in the video, I think at the in the intro, uh, it's gassy as hell with a can on it. So I voided all the warranties, I'm doing everything wrong. So take everything with a grain of salt, but this is how I like this gun. This is how I have this gun set up and how I intend on continuing to uh, employ it.